Hey everybody, welcome back for another Vesta tutorial. Today we're going to be making a tungsten selenide monolayer. Uh, it's going to be using the hexagonal unit cell. Basically we're just going to cut the unit cell, form the monolayer. I think in a separate video what we can do is maybe interface this with molybdenum sulfide monolayer, um, which would be pretty interesting because the unit cells are not ex don't exactly line up. I think the molybdenum sulfide is a little smaller. So I can show you a small strategy you can do in that case. But in this video, let's just focus on making the tungsten selenide monolayer. And I'll talk about what exactly might be, what might constitute a monolayer. So let's go ahead and open up our unit cell of tungsten selenide, which is hexagonal. So you might get something like this in uh, from your uh, uh, sieve file or something. And basically, uh, the monolayer could be two things. It could be this entire thing here, or it could just be uh, basically this this top part. Now, what we want to do when we make our uh, monolayer is basically um, make sure that we keep the composition tungsten selenide, so WSE2. Okay, you don't want to basically make this thing and and get you know W2SE2, you know something like that. You want to make sure that you keep it. Uh, this right here. So if I want to get rid of these atoms, um, basically what I have to do is I have to have my original VASP file with new coordinates in it, right? Because, and the reason I say original VASP file is because that's what's going to contain these unit cell, the unit cell vectors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just make my final VASP file now. So go to export data. We'll do tungsten selenide hex monolayer.vasp. Go ahead and save that. Okay, now what we do is I'm going to center this on A. Okay, I'm going to rotate it just because it, I like viewing it like this. Okay, now what I'm going to do is delete all of the outside atoms. So one way I can do this is by physically deleting them like this and pressing delete. Or I can just come here to edit bonds and I just actually delete the bonds and it goes ahead and does that. So I actually like this one a lot by just doing that. And then basically you can see these are your constituent monolayers here. So then we go ahead and we just delete this, <coughs> this here, excuse my voice. And what we're going to do is we're going to save this as an XYZ. So, and I'm going to, I'm going to do this for you and then I'm going to do something else. Uh, so we'll, we'll save this as an XYZ. And I'm going to call it WSE2 hex. And I'm going to call it one by one by one monolayer. Okay, so go ahead and press save. Do not save hidden atoms. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go into my text editor, which is the FAR3 text editor. Maybe I'll, we'll make a small tutorial on how to use this at some point. But if you're in FAR, what I do is I press F4 to go into the one-on-one -on -one monolayer XYZ. And I'm just going to copy these here. So I'm holding, I hold down Shift, Down button, Control C. Then I press F2, whatever I save. Come back to this file, F4 to open. Now this is the file the hex monolayer file we saved. I'm going to go ahead and rename this WSE2 hex monolayer. Uh, I'm going to actually call this a one by one by one monolayer. So this is what will show up when we open it up in Vesta. This is the name of it. Now what I'm going to do is copy in those atomic coordinates from the XYZ file. And we have the first one is tungsten and then the following two are selenium. So go ahead and save this by pressing F2 then escape. Um, and I'm just going to rename this, so I right click, rename, and I'm just going to add that uh, 1x1x1 in here. And I go ahead and press enter. Okay, so now let's go ahead and open this up. So basically there's our monolayer right there, and then what we do to just visualize this is we can do 2 by 2. So um, in the A and B direction. And you can see basically there you are making your, your monolayer. Now, the question is, is this, are, are you okay with using just three atoms in your electronic structure calculation? Because whatever's in this VASP file, if you add in the atomic coordinates, let's say you're doing con quantum espresso or, or VASP, or something these are basically the atomic coordinates you're going to be using in your 
um, calculation, and these are the lattice vectors. So the question is, is density of states an issue for you? Okay, uh, meaning, do you want more atoms in your unit cell? You know, do you really want to be using this small unit cell? And if you wanted to use a larger unit cell, what you can do is you can, you know, open up this VASP file like we did here. And then what you do is you notice if you want to expand the unit cells themselves, the, the unit cell itself, you can go to edit, edit data, unit cell, transform, and then maybe you could do like four by four. Go ahead and press OK. Yes. And now this is your new unit cell here. So what you do is to visual, basically I, I like to just do this, delete the bonds. And yeah, basically this is your extended unit cell, and this is like a supercell now. I guess you could say this is like a monolayer uh, slab almost. You can maybe even like put a, some other molecules on here. Um, but basically, um, and then if you want to re-add the bonds back in, you can go to new, selenium tungsten, maybe 2.6. I forget how long the bond actually is. Uh, looks like it's a little too long. 2.4. Let's check here how long the bond is. Actually, that I think this looks about right. Let's check how long the bond is. 2.5. 2.5. So this should be 2.56, just a little bit longer. Press apply. Okay, so I guess this is the... Uh, this is the monolayer then. So let's go back to our original file. So this is our original unit cell here. And let's expand this to see how it looks to make sure that we're doing things correctly. So we'll just expand it using the boundary method. And then we'll go ahead and we'll actually make this four by four, press apply. Delete this bottom layer for now, and then press C. And then what I'm going to do is actually snip at this. Come over here to our new 4x4. Press C. Let's bring up our snippet. Um, so it, it is actually the same thing. You have the same pattern here. Um, it looks like it's... Like you can basically see this. in there and now what I'd like to see is it from another dimension maybe B so yeah that's good and let's check it out from A so you have like this so yeah it looks it looks fine I, I think this and so what you would do is you would save this now basically as a VASP and you could use this you know, you might you might be able to use a smaller K point grid uh, with this system, but I think this system uh, has how we had made it should be perfectly fine for calculations. Um, anyways, uh, the question is, how do you add the molybdenum sulfide down here? And it has a different unit cell. So yes, you'll have to change the unit cell a little bit. Uh, maybe I can talk about that in a future video if uh, people want. But in any case. Uh, this is how you make a monolayer of uh, tungsten selenide. If you have any questions, leave them down below, or comments, leave them down below. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel. I have more videos coming out soon, and you should get them first. Okay, take care. Bye.